Hey guys, it's Jen from HID, and um, I'm going to start doing this new video series that I'm going to do for the summer. This is going to be like my Jan tech video blog, I guess. It's going to be incorporating some programming stuff and some computer hardware stuff. So I'm actually going to do it maybe every day, every other day, so maybe mo at max like three days in between. I'm going to try to do it every day when I can. And see if I can bring up any things. So what I'm going to do is maybe show you guys one thing. It's going to be titled what I'm planning to do for this video. So it's going to be like what I'm doing right now. And then um, I'm also going to take some questions. If anyone has any questions to post, like in previous videos, I'm just going to upload them there. And it's going to be in the description. So it's easier to for people to find such um, answers to questions like this. And um, some programming tips because some people like programming tips and I'm just going to show you guys how to do some certain programming thing with Java or Python, C++, C Sharp, whatever, HTML, HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, whatever happens to happen. So um, that's that. So we're going to do two videos for today or maybe just one long video with it cut in half. And so that's that. Okay, so today's video, um, here you can see I have my motherboard. This is the... Maximus for Extreme. It's an RG Public Gamers ASUS motherboard. So high-end stuff for overclocking and whatnot. I'm just playing on overclocking uh, CPU. That's another story. Um, so what I'm actually not focused on is the actual motherboard itself. But this GPU. So I have this GPU. I got it because it doesn't work. Someone give it to me. And um, this is an EVGA GTX 570 HD. So this does not use NVIDIA's reference PCB. Well, actually, kind of. No, it doesn't. Um, so, it's not the stock cooler. It's not a blower cooler. So, there's actually openings in the shroud here. On the bottom back here. You can see the fan from here. See? As you can't see, actually. Uh, put some light. There we go. You can still not see. You can see it reflect out there. So, um, you can see there's opening in the shroud there. Opening the shroud over here, too. And I'm actually turn it off. So... And there's one more thing. So what NVIDIA normally does, you can I've seen it. You've seen it in my GTX 550 Ti. Um, it usually the um, connectors that usually come are two DVI, one um, you dual link DVIs, and then one's usually going to have at least analog. They're both either both or one's going to be at least an I. So DVI I, and then one's usually DVI D. So on this card, and it also comes with a mini display port. On this card, we actually have two DV dual link DVI eyes, H full size HDMI as opposed to mini HDMI. I'm gonna just turn the light, jeez, please. And full size display port. So the second video, I'm just gonna spoil it right now. You should really just watch it, and find out what it is. I was actually gonna use this thing. This is a DVI to mini DP. So it's actually taking DVI in and then exporting out to mini display port. So I could try to use my HP L2021, L2021, L2201X display port monitor from HP. It's very slim. It's like thinner than like a number two pencil. And it only takes display port. And I, I can, I'm not gonna spoil what's going on in that video, but I've always wanted to play games only because I'm actually running it off my um, integrated GPU on my CPU on my Z77 ITX build. So um, what I actually was gonna do to test this thing, to see what's actually wrong with it, was use this build. This is a Corsair um, Carbide 400R. And I was gonna plug it into this Power Plus. Oh, not so good. It's a big gaming case, but I put an MITX, MATX board in there, which is uh, kind of funny. Um, I tried to fit one of the ATX boards, but they actually didn't work. And I figured out was just a BIOS thing, so I returned it, and yeah, that was a problem. So I'm going to just deal with this board until whatever. Probably what I do is I'm going to retrofit it with this um, thing once I can do power supply, and then we're going to do some really cool stuff with this specific build. So uh, the sad news is, I actually was attempting to do this build and fit the card just so I could test the card, but uh, I'm only using a CX430, which normally would be in high, good enough for one single high-end GPU. Pushing it a little, but it's still below um, the recommended spec. I think the wattage for my whole build, if I just put this GPU in, would be 418 watts, which is pushing it, but it's not actually getting, you know, for the full 
wattage that you normally get. But the thing is, the power supply, the CX builder, the Corsair Builder Series, uh, only has an 8 pin, or a 6 plus 2 pin. And this, normally an 8 pin would be beautiful, but we don't have an 8 pin. I need two 6 pins for the HD. So the only difference between the HD, I guess I mentioned, is just that display port. So we'll be, we'll be testing out with the L2210X. L2201X. Oh, yeah, I'm saying L2201X. L2201X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an informal video anyway. And we're going to see if we can get this card to boot. It's probably not going to boot. And then we're going to take the card apart and figure out what's wrong with it. Because it's already broken. Might as well just see what's wrong with it. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take apart my ITX build and install everything including this board on here. Why am I doing that? Because I have this beautiful ROG Connect cable, which I'll be using my laptop, which is over there. And um, that's that. So I'll see you guys on the other side, and uh, yeah. All right, so just uh, for, I just ripped down the system itself. The motherboard I have is actually sitting over there next to where the other stuff is. And focus, focus, focus. Okay, so. Nice. Okay, so what I'm actually doing, what I did was do, did some pre-routing, so there's a lot of cables that kind of just came up from uh, here. They had the cables originally come up here, but there's a little hole that you can actually th fit them through. Um, the only ones you can't fit are like um, things with connectors like, that look big like this, like the fan control, not the fan, the LED controller um, power, or the fan, and the fat fan power, I guess you can consider that, and the USB 3, so I kind of just snuck it into that. Um, then I want to have as few cables there as possible because that is where the 24 pin connector actually I might just route to the second one. Um, we're going to have some uh, connectors up there for the five and a quarter inch uh, DVD dra uh, drive and um, I pre-routed um, the front panel connectors and HD audio which actually just fell out. You know, it's supposed to be going through there um, but we'll about that later. Um, and I also had the Q connectors for the board itself so We'll be doing installing the board next, and then I will be disassembling my system, and then we will be doing the power supply. All right, so um, here is the completed build. Now, a problem I noticed is that I'm not going to keep this build up for that long, because you can see my SFX power supply, which does have dual six pins. It has a six and a six plus two pin on one harness, so uh, it's a six plus eight. The thing is, uh, so awesome, but the problem is it's an SFX power supply. So the 24 pin is like the shortest cable ever. It's really like, and I can't even wrap that behind. You can't unless I mounted the power supply up here, which would be unusual, I guess. So here it is, the uh, Asus ROG Maximus 4 Extreme, and um, you can see that the eye just blinks at the center. Um, there's your start and reset button. I could just press start and reset from from front, from the front rather. And um, here it is. So uh, that USB 3.0 cable, I had to run it here because that's where the port is. And I'm trying to figure out why the heck would they put it there. So to make it less ugly, I actually installed my Corsair H60 right about here. So you can see it. Here is my liquid cooler. I run the tubes up there. There, so it looks just pretty solid. You don't see the uh, H60 tubing that much. And you can see the nice Corsair logo for the CPU block itself. So here's the 570, and here it is. I plugged in my monitor so you can see the split bar cable. It routes, it just dangles around there, and it connects to the monitor. The monitor is there, and we can see um, on the back here is the IO. They use that nice um, ROG thing here, but this is the button I want to press is the ROG connect button. So I have the cable route around to my laptop so you can see the system power off which means it's just off. So let's start up the thing. You can see the LEDs are there, but we can see what's going on with RG Connect. So we're at check CPU, initial USB, initial ROM, and I think this is where it's gonna give me the actual error for the, yeah, it's, it's yeah, whatever. Message display, so that's the, I think that's the error. So you can see the VGA. LED is on, so it's time the graphics card's not working. But it's gonna actually successfully boot. A is actually successful boot, so you can see on RG Connect, boot successful. So it still boots, but in it post, I just, this graphics card's just not working. So we're gonna see what's going on, and my dog's annoying, so. Oh, look at him, oh, look at him. Oh, look at him, ah. Okay, so let's uh, figure out why this is not working.
So with the card actually added system, here's the VGA GTX 570 HD. I have my uh, Arctic Clean, which we'll use to clean up the GPU, and I actually replace the thermal paste with Arctic Silver 5, because that's the only thermal paste I actually have on me. We have a Torx screwdriver, so as a precision screwdriver, I have a Tor T6 at the end, which will be used to actually unscrew these screws at one point. Are these actually Phillips heads? Why won't you look at that? They use Phillips heads. Um, okay, well, there you have it. Um, most graphics cards will use a Torx, but apparently I can just unscrew it with a Phillips head. Oh, well, fig go figure. So I have a Torx screwdriver for no, uh, no reason. Well, I actually have that screwdriver, so it's not an action head. Um, so you can see that some of the screws have been removed, so there's a, supposed to be a screw there. So maybe so this person used to uh, replace the thermal compound or somewhat. They did it the right way, they actually have to unscrew the end and then you can come up with taking off the fan assembly without having to remove the whole entire um, thing itself. So we're going to go see what's uh, inside the GTX 570 HD. So by undoing those screws, I actually got to the shroud, which is not anywhere close. It's supposed to... Okay, this is totally different from the uh, reference uh, design itself. So I might actually have to take off the assembly. So I might have to take, I'm going to put this sh the shroud back on and then we're going to take off the GPU from the top as per expected from the standard one because I don't want to just want to take off the fan because that's going to be stupid. I just want to get to the bottom of the, uh, just want to get to the GPU itself. So we're going to put this back on and uh, try to get to the shroud or get to the uh, GPU. So I finally got all the screws out. There's like a bajillion of them over there. The one that, that took me like 30 minutes to get it. And the reason why is because this screw was completely stripped. Looks, look, yeah. So what I had to do is get my um, tool set and then I had to just ply it out. Just try tying it. I already messed with the PCB here. You can see it scratched up quite a lot. Um, but I don't see any of the traces ruined, so I'm hoping it's still fine. Well, not like the card was fine in the first place anyway, so it's not much of a problem. So, now we're going to take away the fan assembly, and then we will come back. So here it is, the GTX 570 HD from EVGA. So you can see this thermal, th there's like no thermal paste on here whatsoever, or it's all solidified, and there's so much dust in here. We're going to have to, if I had some compressed, I'd already blowing this out right now, but uh, yeah, I, I don't have any, so uh, that might be a problem. So um, I'm just going to pick it up with my hand. Or con swab, and then we're gonna try to just swab it out, and then we're gonna see if all the contacts are made are there. We'll just reseat the whole card itself, um, and then that's it. We're gonna also replace the thermal compound, and we'll do that off camera. There we go, nice, clean, you know, somewhat clean and shiny. Focus, focus, focus. Oh, anyway, um, nice, clean. Yeah, okay, I can barely see it. Um, it's a clean heat sink or fan assembly, and you can see the end. I should just turn this around. You gotta keep spitting because it's on the fan. Oh, so, you can see here it says NVIDIA. There we go, the NVIDIA GF110. So that's what the GPU is, and here's GPU, nice and shiny. We're gonna make it not so shiny when we put some thermal paste on it. Now, the thing with thermal paste on a GPU is that you need to put a lot more than you put on a CPU because look at that thing, that thing is bigger than like any AMD or uh, Intel CPU, like, ever. So, um, we're gonna put some thermal paste, we're gonna put the fan assembly back, I'm just gonna dust it out a little bit, I don't have a, I don't have a compressor on me, which has been unfortunate, but um, we're gonna see if we can put it all together. Let it dry for a bit, because I saturated that thing with the uh, Arctic Clean, and it started seeping through, because it just falls through that little gap here and with the, on an incline with that fan there. Um, just doesn't, you know, it's not awesome. So I'm gonna let it dry for a bit. Put some thermal paste and see what happens from there. All right, see you guys on the other side. All right, so we finished uh, doing all that stuff, putting in the system, and checked that it worked. And it guess what? Didn't work. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't do it on camera. I was like, ugh, I'm like annoyed. I just wanted to get this over with and see if they can get this card to work. But now you can see we're all in my kitchen, and the oven's preheating, and you might be able to tell what I'm going to do next. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, our oven's preheated and it's time to put it in. So I'm gonna see you guys in just a moment. You have a really disgusting oven, so you can't really see it, but there is the graphics card. It's in there. 
so you might as well just do this. Yep, there's a graphics card in there. So, we have a timer on for about seven minutes. So, we're gonna see how that goes for us. And uh, see you guys in just a moment. Almost done. So we're at our last 55 seconds, and then I'll be taking it out. Um, that'll be the next shot, and then we'll be just letting it cool down for about 10 minutes, and then, ooh, so much we can do with that. Focus, okay. So here it is, our GTX uh, 570, uh, yeah, GTX 570 from NVIDIA, so you can see the NVIDIA logo there. So fresh out of the oven is our GTX 570. We will be eating this in just a moment. Just gotta give it about 10 minutes to cool down, so I'm gonna go about 140 in. Yeah, I'm cooking at like midnight. Awesome. So we'll see how this works later. All right, the EVGA GTX 570 HD is installed in the case, and we're all gonna see together if the system boots up. Let's turn our RG Connect and open up on our little thing here. So we're disconnected. So we shall not have it, di wait. RG Connect cable's not even connected to the computer. Maybe that's what I mean by disconnect. Standby power. All right. Do we get a signal? I don't see a signal. So, uh, yep, this graphics card's like dead, unfortunately. What sucks? I really would have liked for this to actually work, but it would appear that GTX. 570 here is officially dead. It doesn't boot successfully. Although that. Uh, it's a VGA LED, right? That VGA LED is apparently telling me otherwise, so. I don't know. Well, I guess that was it for this blog video. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.